So we looked at solar cells and how they work. Uh, the purpose was to investigate and explore how simple solar cells work. And we predicted that the solar cell would have a sweet spot of input power at which it would be most efficient. So we ran a voltage through the solar cell and measured the voltage and the current. To get the power. To get the power. Uh, and this is just a little bit how solar cells work. And I sort of forget how what like all these things are called, but basically, um, this, in this p-type solution, there's like a missing electron or like an electron bolt, and so when the sunlight comes through, it excites the n-type, and the electrons shift, and that creates a current, filling the holes in the p-type, which and usually silicon is the most commonly used in slow cells, but you can use other uh, elements. And uh, yeah. okay, so what we did was when we first started out, we wanted like when we first were thinking about solar cells and solar panels, we wanted to look at the ones on the school, but we couldn't really think of an experiment to do with those. So we took apart a little calculator, like you know how calculators have the little solar cells in them, and so we used that to um, test how what the what power as we change the power, what the power output of the solar cell would be. So we got a lamp, very similar to this one, and set it at different heights and calculated the power um, radiating from it and going into the solar cell. And then we measured the, the uh, voltage and current out of it to find the power. And then we did um, power out over power in to get do the efficiency and then we graphed efficiency over power in and found a nice looking inverse curve. So and also we found that there's a cool like trend in the data where at, um, over time it the power or the well the voltage increased, like hit a plateau and then decreased back to close to zero. It just and it did humps over time, which is pretty cool. For all, uh, for all the different heights of the light, which was interesting. So with our graph, we kind of, um, it sort of supports our hypothesis or what we thought about the sweet spot because we think that if we would have kept going to the left with um, lower power in, it would have reached a peak and then probably come down or plateaued or something. <coughs> um, it probably wouldn't have kept, just, just kept going up. Um, but it was hard to get really low <coughs> powers because our numbers were already real, for current were already really, really low. And as for voltage, because it's a really tiny um, solar cell. So there's more of the interesting voltage data. So we ran each one over 100 seconds. And on average, there were like three pumps for each different. Uh, Height of the light. So there's probably a lot of room for error in this lab because the system we were working with wasn't perfect. Um, it was really a, like <clears throat> the numbers we were working with for the current. That was the really hard part. We had to get a resistance that would give us a significant <coughs> current. Uh, like we tried probably 20 different resistors in the circuit to try to make it so we could get a reliable reading for the current. And so we found one that gave us a pretty reliable reading, but it was really, really small, really close to zero, so it was hard to know if that was being uh, exact. And so we calculated air on the efficiency of the solar cell, and we looked up um, the average efficiency, or the efficiency for an average uh, like solar cell like this. And we got about 80% error. So, I mean, that. We don't know if all the ones in the calculator are how similar they are to these, but we just thought it'd be nice to try to do some error. Um, so after um, we worked through the problem of getting the correct resistance, that was really hard and uh, took a lot of time and actually getting to where we could take data. Um, it actually worked out pretty well and we got a cool 
graph that we learn something about and we saw that bull trend in the voltage for the solar cell. So, yeah. We have time for questions. So we have the we had the power output of the light bulb, like on the light bulb, and then we calculated like um, the inverse like uh, distance, yeah. like the surface area of the light coming out, like how it's like a point source and it comes out in a sphere, and then we did that the ratio of that surface area to the surface area of the solar cell to the power original of that and the power. On um, like how solar cells work, what happens when you fill all the keyholes? Well, the the current goes through the wire, so that's what so it gets excited, and then it goes through, and it creates a current. So it like pushes the electrons down, and then it starts to go around. That's what causes the current. So the electrons like go around the current. Yeah. Okay. So they're continuously so getting holes. drained out of the stuff. Once they get full, they're continuously getting pulled out. Yeah, by because the current, and then there's more holes. So once do you like run out of electrons and? Oh. So it just it starts like a cycle. Once okay. it gets excited, it goes through. Yeah. Okay. I have some questions. Can you take us back to that trend graph? Series of graphs, that page of wonder and intrigue? Did you know this happened? No. What is it? Is it just... Is it like what we saw in that one lab where we were testing the different appliances? Like how the power is not on all the time? Yeah, those are those are like designed to do that. I can't imagine like a solar cell on a calculator I figure is just a solar cell, it doesn't have any regulating equipment in it. So there's some process it seems that's switching on and off. Mm -hmm. Maybe it gets like overloaded and then takes that in. I think this has something to do with the electron depletion or something. Jack? He's not paying attention. <laughs> he doesn't know. He doesn't know. So you guys saw something really interesting. I love that you focused on it, but, but no stabs at what it is? We're going to have to ask the internet. You guys want to ask the internet? Because they, they can hear you. Yeah. Oh, what is this, internet? <laughs> Why does this happen? What does it mean? Yeah. Yeah, all right, thank you.